Good morning, and thank you for having us here today. I'm here to tell a little part of a story that's ongoing. As I have often said over the last year since September 9, 2010, I'm the very proud mayor of the wonderful city of San Bruno. I'm here today, today to tell you a little bit about what happened in our city that day and since then. I hope that our story can help illustrate and emphasize why the issues of pipeline safety we are here to discuss are so critical. On the evening of September 9, 2010, our town was thrust into national limelight when a 30-inch high-pressure natural gas line lying under a quiet, ordinary residential street broke apart. The explosion knocked out a city water main line, ignited flames 2,000 degrees, hundreds of feet in the air, and sent our residents literally running for their lives. Our Crestmore neighborhood, where the explosion occurred, was built beginning in the 1950s. It was a typical, well-kept, and close-knit residential area with about 375 homes. Life for those families changed dramatically in an instant and forever on the night of September the 9th. The explosion that night destroyed 38 homes, damaged approximately 50 more, 17 seriously. 66 persons were injured, and most tragically, eight of our residents members of our community lost their lives. Still, today, over 40 families remain displaced from their homes. Over 400 police and fire personnel from throughout the Bay Area responded to fight the fire. I arrived at the scene shortly after the explosion and was there for most of the night. I saw firsthand the frustration and the difficulty that these first responders experienced as the fire raged for over an hour and a half before the gas could be shut off. With the water main broken and no water at nearby hydrants, firefighters and water staff dragged fire hoses 3,000 feet to the nearest water and were forced to take a defensive rather than an effective offensive tactical approach to putting out this inferno. Residents rescued their neighbors and transported them to a hospital so that emergency medical crews could focus on the most seriously injured. The actions of those responders and many of our residents were nothing short of heroic. Our staff opened an evacuation center for displaced residents that night. And by morning, they had coordinated a very small army of volunteers to establish a local assistance center, or LAC, to provide information, food, clothing, hotel vouchers, supplies, and emotional support for our residents. We staffed a 24-hour public information hotline for the first several days. Continuing today, we have a team of 15 city staff who, in addition to their regular assignments, act as liaisons for affected families. They provide a direct link to the services and information our residents still need to help rebuild their lives. Some just need someone to talk to. Beginning that night, we were called upon to host news conferences and site visits by virtually every state and federal elected official representing San Bruno, short of the president himself. We quickly realized that the attention we were receiving provided some level of comfort for our residents. It also allowed us to share our experience with others who needed to know. We were only beginning to understand then how critical it would be for public officials, emergency personnel, regulators, utility operators, and ordinary citizens to know what can happen and to take the necessary actions to prevent it from ever happening again. Less than 48 hours after the explosion, over 600 of our residents filled the largest room in San Bruno for the first of our several town hall meetings to hear what information we had and to ask questions. By the following day, our staff had completed inspections of all the homes in the Crestmore neighborhood and were escorting families back to their homes. Within weeks, demolition of the destroyed homes was completed and debris had been removed so that the area could be made ready for rebuilding and restoration of the neighborhood. Our response to this terrible incident and the effect it has had on our community did not stop here. And the story of our community resilience was only beginning. Our city has continued an active strategy to support and assist our residents to ease the difficult 
inevitably associ difficulty inevitably, inevitably associated with restoring their lives. This effort has covered a wide variety of programs and services that extend well beyond what cities like ours typically view as their service responsibilities. Fortunately, we have received continuing attention and assistance from many other organizations and agencies, from the Red Cross and other nonprofits to the offices of our state and federal regulators. We continue to coordinate with a network of government and nonprofit organizations to provide informational forums on a variety of issues related to insurance, taxes, home design and construction issues, and others. More importantly, along with our nonprofit and community organization partners, we have hosted two strictly social gatherings for the Crestmore area residents, with dozens of families still living in temporary housing, many outside of the community. The chance to get together with neighbors and friends is a welcome opportunity to reconnect. We recognize now, perhaps more than ever, that these connections are really key to the strength of our small town. Getting our residents back into their neighborhood and their homes has been our priority since the very first day. As one of our residents, a retired firefighter, said early on, I'm going to be the first person to move back in, with the city's help, of course. The faster I can move forward, the less I think of the past. As of today, we have issued building permits to rebuild nearly one-third of the homes that were destroyed. Several more applications are in progress. We expect that the first families to return will be back in their homes shortly after the first of the year, just about 18 months following the disaster. Over the past year, we took an active role as a party to the National Transportation Safety Board investigation into the precise cause of the break in the pipeline and the resulting explosion. This, too, has been an important effort toward the full recovery of our community. Understanding what happened and why will not restore the damage or bring back the lives that were lost in San Bruno. However, it does give us the opportunity to understand what must be done to help prevent this tragedy from happening again anywhere ever. We were pleased with the comprehensive range of the investigation and the strength of the recommendations it produced. The city has received many accolades for the work that we have done and the way our community has responded to this enormous tragedy. Experiencing it as I have up close, I also know that it has come at a very high cost. First and foremost, to the families who suffered tragic losses and to the many who no longer feel entirely safe in their homes. As our city organization has taken on additional responsibility dictated by the new needs and issues of the response and recovery, other critical city projects and programs have not received the attention they deserve. Our already limited resources have been seriously strained, even though we are receiving reimbursement for our financial costs. We're in effect now responsible for operating two cities, the city of San Bruno and the city of Crestmore. We have learned that the physical recovery is actually the easier part of full recovery. As daily life in San Bruno is now returning to something that resembles normal, there is still much more to do. It is vitally important to us and to the full recovery of our community that the recommendation from the NTSB investigation are fully implemented. Sharing our story, we hope will encourage the needed improvements in pipeline operations, maintenance and regulation to assure that communities like ours everywhere are safe. As I have often said, we can repave the streets and we can make sure that the homes are rebuilt, but three years from now, I don't want to hear someone say to me, oh yeah, San Bruno, didn't you have a fire a few years back? I will not let that happen. Full recovery for San Bruno includes a commitment to understand what happened and to share our story in the interest that others do not experience the same tragedy. That is why we are all here today. Thank you for your interest. <laughs>